You know, when I wake up in the afternoon to do these, uh, these videos, usually, like, I have a hard time waking up because I'm tired, or I just don't feel like getting up, or, you know, something simple like that. I feel legitimately sick today, uh, and that's, uh, it's obvious what the reasoning for that is. Ugh, man. That's one of the hard. This is one of the hardest mornings I've ever had to wake up for. Uh, it's almost like what what occurred last night was a nightmare, but it wasn't. It was reality, and reality hits like a freight train when you don't expect it, and that's exactly that's exactly what happened for us. Uh, let's turn on some light in here. <sighs> yeah, we we give a tribute to the uh, the South Carolina man having those red lights. And, uh, you know, in Colombia, that completely just decimated us. Okay, well, uh, if there's a silver lining to any of this, one silver lining is that whenever Tennessee loses, uh, Squidtard and Squidtard Sports win, uh, and that's exactly what happened last night. Uh, got a lot of viewership in terms of just not, not not just the live stream, but the viewership, and I do appreciate everyone that attended uh, my live stream. Uh, I know that you guys, most of you guys are probably just there to see me suffer, but that means you do, or at least you did, put some of your time uh, last night into watching Squid Tard. So that's very much appreciated, and I uh, thank you for that. Ugh. Sour taste in my mouth. Okay, well, the Pickums. Uh, so another silver lining here. Uh, I did, I went... Uh, out of 39 games, I went 30 and 9 this week. So I actually did really good on the uh, the pickums. Move my uh, actual like current record, like my total winning percentage on pickums to a from a like a 72.1 percent to a 73 percent. So yeah, pretty good all things considered. But uh, well, let's go ahead and roll through some of these games and see what happened. For those of you that are waiting. I'm, I'm, I may I may make a separate video for uh, Tennessee today. It, it might be necessary. Anyway, here we go. Let's start off, and I'll just move down all the way through the bottom, uh, the way I did in the Pickums. Uh, Michigan versus Illinois. Got this one right, obviously. Although Michigan had to come out with a game-winning field goal to kind of seal the deal. They really came out and struggled against uh, Illinois. Now, I don't know if that's in par to Illinois being better than what people expect. Because, I don't know, they, didn't they, like, lose to Purdue the following week before this? So, I don't know. But they nearly pulled off one of the biggest upsets going on the road and, and uh, beating Michigan. But Michigan has kind of been the same way as TCU in a lot of their games. They've really kind of rode the struggle bus. But then due to talent or something else, Blake Corum, they've been able to pull away and get the W. Now, I did see Blake Corum go down uh, uh, yesterday. And I don't know if that's in par to... Uh, I don't know if he's... I think he's okay now. But uh, I, I do hope he makes a full and quick recovery. Uh, especially since Ohio State's coming up and you'll need everything you can get for that game. Of course, now I can go with a completely unbiased take. For what is the playoffs now? Since obviously we we have no part in that now, uh, but we'll see how it plays out. Of course, Michigan, Ohio State, the the door the door uh, might be open for the team that loses uh, that game, but we'll find out. It's going to be a great game. Going to come down to the wire, I'd imagine. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. <sighs> All right, Baylor versus TCU. I, I really, I was wrong. And a little bit about uh, TCU, just, just a tiny little bit, you know, my predictions. I got this wrong again because I finished TCU to finish God knows how bad. Uh, and, well, they're sitting there now at 11-0. Even uh, People really legitimately thought TCU was about to fall in this one. Me, me too. Uh, and and uh, TCU got it together in the final drive and pretty much on a buzzer beater uh, got a game-winning field goal and sealed the deal. Uh, against Baylor, I don't know how they keep doing this, but they just they they keep doing it. Uh, whatever the deal is with TCU, they just keep figuring out how to win. I don't really understand how, but they do. They they do. They never stop finding ways to win, 
And uh, so, yeah, credit to uh, credit to TCU on that regard. Sorry, need a drink of water. Uh, but yeah, that's a big W for uh, TCU. And their next game's Iowa State, so I imagine they're going to go twelve and zero, go into the Big Twelve Championship. TCU at this point, if they win uh, tomorrow against Iowa State, I would almost certainly guarantee that they are a lock for the playoffs. But I don't know. There are still a lot of good teams out there that won yesterday. We'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. But uh, up next, Alabama versus Austin P. Got this one right, obviously. Alabama came out and struggled a bit on offense, but got it together. And, well, talent took over, and Bama came out and won. So, yeah, nothing much else to thought. Florida State, the same thing. They had a game plan, although it's Louisiana. Uh, Billy Napier lists Louisiana. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, okay, what's that? Sorry, my computer got a notification. Anyway, yeah. I would say, in all honesty, uh, Florida State looks really good this year. And in my mind, uh, they'll probably end out the season 9-3. and three. I, I legitimately see no way uh, Florida beats them. But we'll find out. We will find out. Big win for Florida State, though. Mississippi State over ETSU, like 51-7. to Dominating win by, uh, by Mississippi State. Not much else there to say. Texas A&M versus UMass, uh, it would have been a humiliation. Uh, if it, it would have been just absolute humiliation if Texas A&M found a way to lose this game, but they didn't. Uh, Texas A&M came out and won, but then again, anyone in the country, uh, any, any Power 5 team that exists currently would be able to beat UMass by 20-something points. And, well, that's what Texas A&M did. Even though they're not going bowling, at least they managed to get one more win before the season comes to a close for them. They got to play LSU next week. And then uh, this is the, I guess, is this? Yeah, this is the second one I got wrong. Florida versus Vandy. Now, of course, I predicted Vandy to go 0-12, so anytime they do win, uh, I'm wrong on the game. Uh, but man, nobody saw this coming. Florida losing to Vandy on the road. That one really threw everybody off. Vandy, uh, of course, we knew after their win against Kentucky that they were slowly but surely improving. And, well, they get another one here. It's the first win against Florida since, I, I can't remember. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't around to see it. There were a couple of times they were really close with Jim McElwain as head coach. But I, other than that, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen Florida lose to Vandy at all. That new logo might be helping him out. That might be some good juju. Uh, Vandy is a... I'm going to say this. Vandy has a real solid chance to make a bowl game. Uh, I'm, yes, I know who their last opponent is. And their last opponent is a complete shit stain right now. So, and Which I'll get into momentarily. But Vandy right now, even if they do finish 5-7 and seven for the season... Uh, compared to where people thought Vandy was going to be this year, that's still a major, major improvement. And as for Florida, well, 6-6, six and six, you should have expected this with uh, Billy Napier. Uh, because he, I mean, this is his first year at a, I mean, this is his first year at a Power 5 coaching job, especially in the SEC. Uh, it's, it's, we knew it wasn't going to be easy for him, and, well, we, it shows. 6-5 and five now, uh, but I don't know. We'll find out if they can win. If they can win a bowl game, they'll. I mean, they'll be worse. I mean, they'll be less worse than Dan Mullen's record. Uh, but there's no way uh, Florida man is not disappointed because Florida fans held held their expectations way too high for Billy Napier, uh, and so they're probably already screaming "Fire Napier! Fire Napier! Fire Billy Napier!" Uh, so, I mean. If you if you hired Billy Napier for the sole purpose of going six and seven in his first year, then wham wham wham. Uh, and if you had expectations that were higher than seven wins for this year, then also wham wham wham. But yeah, big win for Vandy, tough loss for Florida. That's all there is to it. Virginia Tech, how about this? So I I predicted them in the off season to beat Liberty. Uh, when I came into this one, I absolutely expected to be wrong, but no, Virginia Tech 
by a single point got the W over Liberty. And I don't do point spreads, thankfully. So and all that matters is who wins and who loses. And Virginia Tech found a way to win over Liberty. A Liberty team that beat Arkansas and blew out BYU. Virginia Tech got the W on the road against them. So, yeah. Obviously, that Virginia Tech team had nothing to lose. Now they're 3-8. and eight. Uh, I don't know. It's a good win for Virginia Tech. And a massive W on both ends for uh, the Virginia, uh, for wearing the Virginia gear uh, on the helmets. That was, that was really good on them. Shout out to them for that. Uh, and then, uh, oh, Wisconsin beat Nebraska. I don't even think anybody paid attention to this one. Although I, I got it right. <laughs> Woo. But I think Wisconsin won by like a point. Yeah, it was like 15-14 was the final score. Look, I talk about a lot of time how NC State was a bust for me uh, because I predicted them to go like 11-1, and one, and now they're sitting there with four losses. But, man, Wisconsin had them winning the Big Ten West uh, at 10-2. and two. <sighs> They're lucky to make a bowl game. Golly, what a sellout they've been for me. But they did pull it out, and they got the win over Nebraska. Nebraska, too, is kind of the same thing. A massive bust. I had him going 8-4 and four this year. <sighs> Coaching carousel will be interesting this year. At least there's that. All right, next up, uh, Purdue and Northwestern. Got this one right. Purdue got the W over Northwestern. They're sitting there at 7-4 and four now. Pretty good chance they can make it back to the Music City Bowl. Uh, we'll see how that plays out when we get to it. We, we may get to it. I don't know. I don't know. Wait till next week. All right, next up, Michigan State and Indiana. Uh, got this one wrong. Indiana uh, got the W over Michigan State. Uh, nobody really pays attention to these games other than, like, maybe uh, rival fan bases and uh, fan bases of these teams. But other than that, nobody really, really pays attention to them. But, no, Indiana did get the W over the Spartans. Michigan State right now sitting at five and six. I don't I don't remember who their last opponent is, but there's a solid chance that they could finish five and seven and out of a bowl. Is Mel Tucker gone? I don't know, but I would imagine uh, I would imagine he is. I would I, maybe maybe not. I don't know. He's teetering on the hot seat though. That's for sure. Something needs to be something needs to be reevaluated there, as uh, Josh Heupel would say. You know, uh, I trolled Dan Mullen with uh, development. Now we got Josh Heupel with evaluate. Uh, evaluate this, evaluate that, evaluate my fucking nuts. All right, I'm sorry. That was a little too mean. Uh, Duke over Pitt. Or, yeah, Duke over Pittsburgh uh, did not go as planned, at least in my book. Pittsburgh got the W over Duke. Good win for Pitt. I'll say that much. Uh, they needed They needed some more wins. Uh, and now they're sitting there at seven and four, same record as Duke. Duke has had a really easy schedule up until this point, so this really doesn't surprise me that things played out like this. But still, uh, shout out to Pittsburgh on getting that W. They needed it. They absolutely needed it. West Virginia over Kansas State. I knew I was going to be wrong on this one. Kansas State got the uh, W over West Virginia. Uh, the Mountaineers did score a bunch of points, but I mean that's all there was. It uh, wasn't anything else that really uh, threw me threw me out, making me think that they were going to win the game. But no, Kansas State came out and got the dub. And, uh, well, unfortunately, that's really bad for uh, uh, West Virginia because now they, they just took their seventh loss. They're bowl ineligible. Definitely not what they were expecting with JT Daniels at the helm because Neil Brown went out. Got JT Daniels from the transfer portal. West Virginia fans thought they were hitting a gold mine. And, well, it looks like that was completely fool's gold. Because now it's just... It's just really bad over there with West Virginia. Now, they haven't fired Neil Brown yet. But, me, along with Mel Tucker, it, it's very possible now that... It, now, Because now the season's over. You're, you going to a bowl is not happening now that you're 4-7 uh, and seven on the year. So... If you're if you had plans to fire Neil Brown, there's no better time than now uh, because any aspirations for the season are behind you. Washington State over Arizona, 
definitely saw that one coming, that's for sure. Uh, they got the W there. Predicted that one right. Same with this one, Houston over East Carolina. And the only reason to follow Houston at this point is because I did predictions for them. But Houston, big win last night. A dominating win on the road against East Carolina. An East Carolina team that was a six-point favorite. Uh, I couldn't imagine getting blown out uh, when you're when you're a high favorite. Uh, I couldn't imagine that. Never happened to me before. Arizona State and Oregon State. Well, I'm, Arizona State sucks this year, uh, so I really kind of that was kind of a bust on me. Uh, another bust of a team. They played Oregon State, and Oregon State uh, they got the W. So I got this one wrong. <laughs> I predicted Oregon State to do actually pretty good this year. Uh, well, in Oregon State standards, six and six, but now they're sitting there at eight and three. Man, when I first started doing these predictions, you know, when I first started getting on YouTube, uh, Oregon State was like literally the bottom feeder. They were the bottom tier, uh, like the bottom feeder of the conference. And they're sitting there now with eight wins. So really, shout out to Oregon State and shout out how they, to how they uh, turn that program around because they, I mean, Oregon State is, I mean, of course, they're not in competition for the Pac-12 championship or anything like that, but they're sitting there with eight wins. Uh, I'm going to get themselves a, into a nice little bowl game. So, yeah, a, a nice step up for Oregon State. Boston College and Notre Dame. Notre Dame got the W. Uh, and not in typical Notre Dame fashion. They actually came out, avoided Notre Dame syndrome, and uh, beat the ever-living uh, will to live out of Boston College. So, yeah. Good job on uh, Notre Dame to do that one. Georgia, Kentucky. Georgia wins. Uh, they struggled early, but they did get the W uh, by 10 points. Kind of what we all expected. Uh, so, yeah, shout out to Georgia fans for being 11-0. Although, I got to say this, and this isn't trash talk. Y'all got to get off Stetson Bennett. I don't understand what the what the deal is with Georgia fans just hating Stetson Bennett. Uh he, you, you do realize he's gotten you to this point, right? Um, he got you to this point. Stetson made one mistake last night. He threw a bad pick, and of course people called him a dummy for it, which he should have been called a dummy. When you make a boneheaded pick like that, of course that's what you should expect. But you all are acting like Stetson Bennett is like Jarrett Garantano level, uh, like just bad. No, no, Stetson's good. When when will you realize that? When will you when you when will you people realize that Stetson Bennett is actually a pretty decent quarterback? I don't understand uh, what the deal is with that. Uh, Georgia fans just really really want a uh, like a five star legendary quarterback to come win the Heisman and then just be the best quarterback to ever play quarterback. Uh, I, and of course, I don't I don't think that's the case with Stetson Bennett. I don't think he's going to win the Heisman this year. But Stetson Bennett is good enough to get you guys to where you want to be and that's the national championship if you have a quarterback that's good enough to help you reach the national championship you shouldn't strive for more you should not strive for any more than that because that's where you want to be right that's where georgia fans aspire to go the national championship i know i know there are a lot of georgia fans that uh, love Stetson Bennett, and for those of you, I'm not referring to you, but there are some of you that really just hate Stetson Bennett for no reason. And no matter no matter what what it is, no matter whose fault uh, it is, no matter if like the if the running back fumbles the ball, it's Stetson's fault. That's some of these Georgia fans think. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with them. Ohio State beat Maryland. Uh, got this one right, obviously, and uh, well, they did it uh, with like no clouds in the sky. Uh, I think, or there were some clouds in the sky. I don't know. If there were, Ohio State would just have some serious trouble. But, nope. They got the W, and they, they pulled it out. And, uh, yeah, they're sitting there at 11-0. and Miami, uh, well, Clemson beat Miami, another team that's doing really good right now. Uh, and they still have playoff aspirations. And the fact that one of the top five went down uh, this last week really helps them out. Uh, and if they went out, the ACC... I don't know, but the fact the fact that North Carolina lost that's an absolute dagger to Clemson's resume. They needed that. They needed North Carolina to uh, went out, and well, they didn't. Uh, so yeah, it's 
It's not looking good for them. Not looking good for them at all on the resume standpoint. But who knows? Anything can happen. Next up, Penn State and Rutgers. Uh, Penn State got the W over Rutgers. Rutgers now 4-7 uh, and seven on the year. Uh, tough break for the Scarlet Knights. They just seem to have hit a wall in terms of making a bowl. Last year they were 5-7. and seven. This year it looks like they're going to be 5-7 and seven, or maybe 4-8. and eight. I don't know. But yeah, tough break for uh, Rutgers. Penn State, like I said, uh, I mean, of course they, they need to win out to help out Michigan uh, in Ohio State's resume. Uh, for Ohio State's sake, I think it does matter if they end up losing to Michigan. Maybe they can bounce back into the playoffs. I think if Michigan gets, uh, I think if Michigan loses to Ohio State, though, it would be tough to for them to be back in the playoffs. Their resume is ext- well, their non-conference resume. I really just don't see that uh, being too effective for them in terms of the playoff committee. But who knows? Who knows? NC State and Louisville. NC State got the W. No, I don't think did they. I actually think I got. Hold up. Hold up. No, I've got to get the Twitter fact checkers out for this one. I because th- if I'm right, I think NC State lost. I I put it down as me getting it right when I had NC State winning, and uh, I got to be honest with that one. I do not. I don't think NC State won last night, as I expected. Squintard was wrong. He didn't fact check. I'm glad I did though. So that that moves my record to 29 and 10. 125. Sorry. Now now that I got a game wrong, I have to fix my entire record. <laughs> that sucks. What an idiot I am. Anyway, uh yeah, NC State. God, this is all your fault. You guys are such a massive bust this season. I cannot believe you did this to me. Louisville, though, what, what a good job on Louisville. Uh, really, for real, though, a lot of people expected them to fall off the map after they had those first few losses, but they've bounced back in a tremendous way. Another top 25 win for them. They've beaten both Wake Forest and NC State, and uh, now they're sitting there at 7-4, and four, so definitely a rebound year for Louisville. And they play Kentucky next week, so I don't know uh, what might happen there. But if they win that one, they're going to be sitting there at 8-4. and four, uh, with a, I mean, they bounce back in a great way, to say the least. So shout out to, uh, shout out to the Fighting Lose on that one. Texas and Kansas. Texas must... Uh, well, we all knew. I, I think Kansas... Uh, I think, really, uh, Texas took those Kansas memes personally. Because, uh, yeah, they came into this one all guns blazing and just absolutely wiped my uh, Kansas off the map. And, they man, they did that in a phenomenal way, too. Uh, they just absolutely just skull drug Kansas. Poor Kansas. I really thought they were going to be a playoff team this year, sir. Uh, BYU against Utah Tech. Uh, just as the spread says, who cares, honestly. I mean, they won. Woo. Cincinnati over Temple. Got this one right. Uh, but Cincinnati struggled a little bit, but no, pulled out, pulled away, got the W. I think they won by like two scores and, uh, yeah, good win for Cincinnati. They'll remain in the rankings most likely as they should if they win and they did. So yeah, good on them. Got this one wrong. Iowa gets Minnesota. Um, who, I mean, this is actually an important game in some aspect because now Iowa controls their destiny in the Big Ten, uh, the Big Ten West. They just have to win out. Uh, who, who knows if they? Who knows though? Who knows? It's very well possible. We could see another Michigan versus Iowa Big Ten championship. It's possible. Well, I don't know. We'll find out. Got this one right, obviously. Auburn beat Western Kentucky. Nothing much else to say there. Auburn. Woo. They got to play Alabama next week. Can they make them struggle too? I don't know. Uh, This one I got wrong, and I think everyone got this one wrong. Everyone on the map was, I mean, everyone in the universe was expecting Georgia Tech to lose against North Carolina, and, well, they didn't. Georgia Tech went on the road and uh, put the hurt on the, uh, on, well, the Tar Heels. And, honestly, we should have expected this. Because North Carolina, along with Michigan and TCU, have had one thing in common, 
and that's uh, really kind of struggling throughout most of their games, but getting the W and finding ways to do that. But unfortunately here, North Carolina's luck has run out, and they ended up losing to Georgia Tech, a, what is a pretty bad Georgia Tech team, but I don't know. I really don't know. It's a head coachless Georgia Tech, but may, maybe they found their head coach and uh, who they brought onto the field, but we'll see. I don't know. Well, we will see. Stan, uh, Cal over Stanford. Got that one right, but that's all. I mean, that's all there is to it. Got this one wrong. Texas Tech over Iowa State. Uh, <sighs> Iowa State, man. Come on. Actually, I kind of expected this, and I'm glad I did. I predicted Iowa State to go 5-7, and seven, and it looks like they're right on the money with that one. Man, how about that? Arkansas and Ole Miss. I did not expect that. I predicted Arkansas to win this one, but I did not expect Ole Miss to get absolutely drug across the field. At one point, it was 42-7. to seven. Uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened, but man, that was ugly. That was ugly. I guess in a, I guess in a sense, uh, it's hard for Lane Kiffin to coach a game and then find a house to move in at Auburn. I don't know. That's not, that's something I saw Brandon Walker say. Uh, I'm off Twitter for a while, as you can tell. But, um, man, I don't know what happened. I really don't know. Uh, this is a five and five Arkansas, so it wasn't like they were the. If they were the Arkansas team I thought they were going to be, then maybe this could happen. But no, 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 no. Nope. No, sir. Completely threw me off, I'll say that. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. You know, it's funny. Oklahoma put up 28 points in the first quarter alone, and then they didn't do anything else throughout the entirety of the game. Literally, through, through the, uh, the next three quarters, they sat there and did absolutely nothing. And, and they still won. So that tells you how bad it's been for uh, Oklahoma State, uh, to, to, uh, to say the least. And like Arkansas, Oklahoma's 5-5 five and five as well, so really can't find any excuses for Oklahoma State other than uh, if, they, if, it was a, if it was a neutral site game, we would have won. Uh, I wonder which fan base used that excuse. <sighs> okay, Missouri beat New Mexico State. Got that one right. All there was to it. USC beat UCLA. That's a big one. That's that's actually that has a level of significance. Obviously, USC with the win over UCLA, fitting, sitting there at ten and one. That's their final conference game of the uh, of the year. They've clinched their uh, spot in the uh, Pac-12 title game, and they've got Notre Dame next week. So if they beat them, they'll be sitting there at eleven and one. Uh, going into the Pac-12 championship, they win at when they win that, they're going to be sitting there at twelve and one with little excuse for the playoff committee to leave them out. So in my mind, all USC has to do is win out at this point, and they're in the college football playoffs. Uh, but we'll see. They've got two more games to prove that. A big win over UCLA, which UCLA didn't play bad either, but somebody had to win and somebody had to lose, and UCLA came out the loser. And this would have a lot more implications had a. Uh, had a certain team taking care of business. <sighs> Cannot wait to go off on, on them, but we'll see. Uh, Wake Forest over Syracuse. Got this one right. Tough break for Syracuse, but like Kansas, they're sitting there bolt. They're sitting there bowl eligible. So take from that what you will. Uh, that, that's how, that's all there is to say about that. LSU over UAB. Still, um, LSU doesn't control their own destiny by any means, or maybe they do. They still have uh, Georgia in the SEC championship game, so there's that. But we'll, I mean, we'll find out what 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 uh, identity LSU has in the, the next few weeks from now. They got Texas A and M next week. Could they possibly blow that one? No. <laughs> Washington over Colorado. Who would have seen that coming? I know, crazy, shocking revelation. Utah against Oregon. Uh, I, I picked Utah to go on the road and beat Oregon in, the, in my uh, predictions for the offseason. Well, it turns out they didn't do that. They, uh, Oregon actually clutched up. It was a, it was a tight defensive game, and uh, they came out on top 20-17. to 17. And not that it has any implications for uh, the playoffs, but this does hold some implications for the Pac-12 championship. And I think now it's uh, 
I, I don't know. Is it confirmed now that it's going to be USC versus Oregon? I think it is. Uh, well, Oregon still has to play Oregon State, and if they, I think they'll win that one. But in my mind, yeah, I think uh, I think Oregon has clinched their spot in the uh, the big the the big the Pac-12 championship. My head is in various places right now, especially now that we're getting to the cream of the crop here, the final game to talk about. Uh, what the hell happened last night? I don't even know. Um, you know, for all the other top five teams, Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, of course, they struggled last night. We, we saw us struggling, too. Um, but with them, it was just a bad day uh, against a opponent who they overlooked. It was a rough time, but they managed to find a way and crawl back, get the W. They struggled. That's all there was to it. They struggled. We just got beat. And we didn't just get beat. We got absolutely, we got our asses just fried. I mean, we got cooked so badly. Um, what was the spread? Uh, well, it says on there, Tennessee 21 and a half point favorite. But um, Tennessee was going into this game a 23 point favorite. And South Carolina covered that. South Carolina covered the spread that Tennessee had over South Carolina. There you go. There, there's the story. There's the story for this week, right there. What a, what a pathetic joke of a, uh, of a performance. It's, it's enough to where I have to make a separate video about it because now that I've spoken my thoughts on how bad the loss looked, you got, you got these dumbass Tennessee fans, uh, going like, it's only one loss, good part. It's only one loss. That's it. I don't. Of course, if you guys know anything, I actually did get this game right because I predicted South Carolina to beat Tennessee. I did. I predicted South Carolina to beat Tennessee. And had we lost yesterday by a one or two or three points, you would. Of course, I would have been pissed initially. But I predicted us to drop a game, another game, and well, we we did that. But we didn't just drop a game yesterday. We absolute we shit the bed, collapsed, and we just looked like an atomic level failure yesterday. South Carolina absolutely destroyed Tennessee. If this were if this were a home game, it would have been no different. South Carolina outplayed us. They outcoached us. They certainly outdefensed us. How about that? Tennessee was stopped multiple times on defense, and you know when you when you, when you score thirty eight points, it, most of the time that's good enough to win. But when you've got Tennessee's defense, you have to score twice that to even hope of winning the game. Sixty three points. Remember, reminder: this was a team that got shut out by Florida uh, last week, or nearly shut out. My bad, but yeah, they put up. They think they put up like three something points on Florida. Point was, South Carolina's offense is terrible. Spencer Rattler, most of the time, has no idea who he's throwing to. But not in this game, though. Um, Tennessee's defense is an ailment for all of your offensive issues. South Carolina came in and put up a 60 bomber on Tennessee's terrible defense. Season's over at this point. Uh, any aspirations for the playoffs, you can forget that. We, we can still go to a New Year's Six, but again... The, the, my point still stands. There is no legitimate reason you can find uh, on either side of the planet, or, or uh, not even in Nashville, not in Memphis, not in, not especially not here in Knoxville. Nobody you can find uh, that's defending Tim Banks at this point. He needs to go. This uh, this shit has gotten out of control. Uh, Sixty three points to South Carolina is. It, that is a fireable offense right there, and you need you need to be off the coaching staff past that point. And I hope we get rid of them. Uh, I do because this this is bullshit. How in the world 
do you have a defense that sucks that bad? That bad. And, you know, Tim Banks is all about zone, the, covering the zone so that they don't get any big plays. South Carolina got more big plays last night than I have fingers on my fucking hands. M- Double-digit big plays for South Carolina. I think they had, like, 15-something plays that were over 20 yards. Especially when, when we finally stopped them on 3rd and 20 in a crucial point of the game where Tennessee could have very well taken the ball back and made it a 4-point game. 3rd uh, and 20, uh, Spencer Rattler throws an absolute dime to a wide-open receiver for 25 yards. And, and then he runs down the field for some more yardage because they don't know how to tackle either. Literally, the secondary is leaving wide receivers just wide the hell open. They're, they're, they have the ability to do whatever they want. South Carolina, at some points, are getting 50, 60-yard bombs for a touchdown, which, of course, is going completely against what Tim Banks called the zone, uh, no, protection. Uh, uh, who gives a fuck, honestly? Nobody gives a damn what you call it. The point is, we sucked on defense last night. That was the worst defensive performance I've ever had to see. And... It, if I was around to watch Derek Dooley's defense, which, you know, their performances have been bad. They, they gave up 50 bombers to Troy. But that Troy team would probably put up 70 or whatever the hell Tim Banks is coaching over here at uh, Tennessee. So, yeah, Tim Banks needs to go. Uh, I've left. I, I, I was, of course, indifferent on Tim Banks because we were winning. And then I came out in the Florida game and had a big rant on Tim Banks. But uh, I always thought that we could deal with him, at least until we find a better defensive coordinator. No, he needs to go. He needs to leave the coaching staff immediately. Um, he needs to go ahead and fill out his paperwork. Just get get the hell out of Knoxville. But that That is the last straw for me, for Tim Banks. There's literally nothing from this point onward that can excuse that. Um, Tim Banks is a complete dumpster fire of a head coach. He's a dumb, dumbass who doesn't know what he's doing. He has no idea. Uh, he has no idea what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball. And he can't even figure out how. If he can't figure out how to stop someone on third and twenty, then there's just no hope for him. He's not a defensive coordinator. He's just another offensive coordinator for everybody that plays us. He's a dumbass. Uh, he doesn't know how to work a freaking defense, and he needs to go ahead and get sent out his paperwork. Uh, take whatever buyout he needs to and get the hell out of Knoxville. Tim Banks is the worst defensive coordinator in the country. By a country mile, you cannot find a defensive coordinator in the nation or anywhere uh, in history that even compares as close to the level of garbage and humiliation that Tim Banks put on the field last night. So, yeah, Tim Banks, take you and take that dumbass with you, Willie Martinez, the secondaries coach. He's a dumbass, too. Get both of these idiots out of Knoxville immediately. Uh, They have no idea what the hell they're doing. They're sitting there just filing out their paychecks and sitting there taking a massive shit all over uh, Neyland Stadium or wherever else they're playing. Just sitting there with a fist up their asshole the entire time. They have no idea who they're coaching for, what they're doing. And clearly it shows in how the players played last night. The frustration level that the players were showing... um, not not just in the fact that they were getting absolutely burnt on every play. Uh, Jalen McCullough and uh, Kamal Hayden um, overrated. We we had them out for um, a majority of the start of the season, and we 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 thought our secondary was going to play terrible. Our secondary at the start of this year looked way different than how our secondary does now, which was it it looked better. It looked better at the start of the season than it does now. Uh, Jalen McCullough was getting burnt on every single play. He like burnt toast burnt. Uh, he they they had him. I mean, they had sixty yard dimes thrown down the field because Jalen McCullough was getting burnt every single time. So you can't play zone. You can't play man. You can't play nothing. Uh, I, I, but our defense, it, it, it isn't to the point where South Carolina was just able to do whatever the hell they want to. But that's exactly what happened uh, last night. And yeah, there's a legitimate chance we could lose to Vandy next week. Um, Of course, I never thought I'd be concerned, especially uh, in the offseason, about Vandy. 
I, I never thought I'd be legitimately concerned about playing Vanderbilt, but here we are. Here we are. I'm legitimately concerned. And as a Vandy fan, I'd probably be talking as much shit as you possibly can right now because I I don't I don't think Tennessee is winning next week. If we if we trot out this shit load of a defense next week, you can forget it. Honestly, uh, Vandy would probably put up 60 on Tennessee. or se- Vandy's going to put up 70 or 80 on the Vols. Book that shit now. Um, so, yeah, we have nothing to lose at this point. Drop Tim Banks off our roster. Put it, uh, Kick him off. Uh, just, just drop him. Fire his ass. He's, he has no idea what the hell he's doing on defense. And it's not just one game performance. It's been all freaking year every year all year long the entirety of the season even go back to last year look at the Purdue game Purdue did whatever the hell they wanted to with Tennessee and then every other team behind that and then look at what it, what we've got now 63 points to a terrible South Carolina team there's no excuse for it there's nothing you can find that makes this a little less worse no this is about as bad as it can get so, yeah, fire Tim Banks uh, and fire Willie Martinez. Both these guys obviously do not know what the hell they're doing. They're, they're clowns, they're buffoons, and they need to get the hell out of Knoxville. How's that for your little rant right there? How's that for your rant? Never have I had to come on here and talk about how I want someone gone off our team. I, 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 we're talking about somebody that defended Jeremy Pruitt all the way up until those allegations came out. Never have I come on here and talked about how I've wanted to fire somebody as bad as I want to see Tim Banks gone off our uh, off our roster. Because this, this shit is unacceptable. It's absolutely unacceptable. I hope we get some things under control. We've got to get some things fixed immediately. This is still going to be a really good season for Tennessee. I, probably, I mean, of course, it's going to be one of the best seasons we've seen in a long time, which is more than any anybody can say about Tennessee uh, the years before, and I much and I'd much rather take a blow out to South Carolina in a ten win season over uh well being blown out by all of our conference opponents in a five win season. I'll say it as that, but yeah, that's all there is to it. <sighs> I have much else to, left to say than that. See y'all next time, BPD.